let me see the represent the light, the traveling light, light. So in this case, we don't care about um, the phase. We don't care about the, the, the wavelengths or the frequency. Um, we also uh, don't care about the amplitude. Amplitude. So the only thing we care about is the traveling direction. So we use a ray. And the ray is no phase, there's no wobble, there's only one direction. So we don't care about this, we only care about the traveling direction. Then we use the ray optics um, to analyze reflection, refraction, total reflection, and also the image from the lens and the mirror. So let's start from the reflection. Number one, reflection. Reflection um, is a phenomenon that uh, could be found anywhere in the, the daily life. Suppose we have a flat surface. The flat surface um, is not transparent. Then if there is a light, strike the surface. Striking the surface, then it will be bounced back this way. Then we, we know if we use a detector or there is a, a guy uh, using the eyes to observe this light, um, it will get a very huge reflective intensity at some position, at some angle. But if we change the observation position or we change the position of the detector, then we get a very weak intensity. So that means the light uh, bounced back by the surface has uh, a very straightforward uh, direction and there's no scattering and uh, the direction is a constant and is stable. So if we want to measure uh, the direction of the bounced light, we can do a normal line of the surface this is a normal line of the surface, and we can measure the angle from the incident line to the normal. We call this incident angle, I labeled as uh, theta i. And I use um, the theta r or b to represent the bounce back light. So uh, the bounce back light with the normal is the angle I labeled as theta b. And when we do the measurement, we find that these two angles are equivalent. The incident angle is the same as the bounce back angle or reflective angle. This is called reflection, uh, the rule of reflection. And to interpret the, um, this math, we can think about it in this way. If we have a particle, so we have a ball, strike a surface, okay. strike the surface, and this ball will be bounced back this way. So if we check the momentum, the dynamic momentum of the, of the ball, we can separate the momentum in two components, the vertical component, vertical component and the horizontal component. So this is a, a kinetic momentum of this bore. And then we know in the horizontal direction, there's no force. So this ball will keep the same uh, moving condition, right? So horizontal direction, the momentum doesn't change. This is a conservation of the momentum in horizontal direction. But in the vertical direction, there is a surface. This rigid surface is going to bounce back the momentum. And we know the energy conserved if there is no energy lost. Energy lost. Then the bounce back uh, vertical component should 
equivalent to the original vertical component, right? So in this case, we have a vertical component with opposite direction, but the same magnitude. In this case, we can confirm this angle, the incident angle is equivalent to the reflective angle. So um, the reflection, if we have incident angle equivalent to uh, the reflective angle, that's the reason of conservation of momentum and energy. So this is a reflection. The second one, phenomenon for the light is refraction. Refraction is a phenomenon when a light cross an interface. So there's the interface of two transparent media, air and the water. And there's a light strike the interface. And then from the reflective light, we know some of the light bounce back at the interface and some of the light will cross and enter the second media. So if we also draw a uh, sketch the normal direction of the interface, then we can measure the three angle. The first angle will be the incident angle from the incident light to the normal, right? we call it the theta i. And the reflective angle is from the reflective light to the normal, we use theta b. And the third one is the angle in the water that will be um, the outgoing rays to the normal. We call this refractive angle. It's called refractive angle. And from the measurement, we find that uh, the angle in the air equivalent, but is larger than the angle in the water. So it is what would happen if we change the second meteor from the water, we change water with the glass or any crystal or anything that transparent media, we still have the same relation. That is angle in the air is always larger than the angle in other media, other transparent media, material, or media. So in this case, um, we can see the light doesn't travel along the same direction. And if the light uh, starts from the water and go to the air, uh, the angle will, will increase. So that means the angle in the air is always the largest. And this is a phenomenon people know very long ago, but uh, people don't know the mathematical relation between the angle in the air and the angle in the water. But after 1,000 years, 1,000 years later, a mathematician called Snell, and he just uh, summarized the quantitative relation between the incident angle and the refractive angle. He states that this relation is a constant. So if they do a sine theta, sine theta i over sine theta r, the incident angle over the refractive angle, but within the sine function, this is a constant. So he called this constant as refractive index. Okay, this is very interesting. Um, so before this equation uh, was addressed by Snell, people don't know the relation, the quantitative relation between the theta i and the theta r. The reason is easy because 
people don't know how to get the precise solution of the sine function. Sine function um, is uh, very difficult to calculate if there's no calculator, right? So until um, the mathematician Taylor knows the Taylor expansion, the sine angle could be explained by some polynomial explanation um, summarized and um, people can use uh, Taylor expansion to, to get the result of sine function. So after uh, people can calculate the sine function precisely, then they find this relation. So it takes a thousand years to address this law. So this relation is called Snell's law. Snell's law. And to do the calculation, we can say in this way, um, if we have uh, two media, two media, one is air, the other is water, and the incident light, and there is refractive light. So we have theta in the air and the theta in the water. Then we have the sine theta in the air over the sine theta in the water is equivalent to the index of the water. But you might have a question that if we have um, interface of the water and glass, how do we address, it, uh, address this question? So in this case, we have to change the Snell's law into another uh, format that is the index in the media one in the water times the sine theta in the water is equivalent to the index in the glass times sine angle in the glass. So that means if we do the ratio of the sine theta, that will be the inverse ratio of the index that will be ng over nw in the glass over the index in the water. So this is a uh, um, refractive law or the Snell's law um, between two transparent media. So um, you might have a question why this is true. So how do we interpret the Snell's law? So why is the sine theta, the ratio of sine theta is a constant? Why is it not the cosine theta? Right? So to address this question, we have um, another things that could be considered. So let's talk about something else. Uh, the road condition. Construction. So this is interesting. I'll tell you why. If we want to construct the road, from Bethlehem to Trenton. And there's the border of the state. Left is Pennsylvania, right is New Jersey. Okay. So if we want to construct the road from PA to NJ, and then we want to minimize the cost. cost. So how do we construct this road? So the easiest way is we can construct the road. It's very strict. Then we get the minimum mileage. The minimum mileage will minimize the cost. But this is ideal case. In reality, we know the cost in PA and New Jersey are different because they cost the different tax, right? You pay different tax and the tax in PA is cheaper and the New Jersey is expensive. So if we want to construct a road and minimize the cost, we want to do construct the road with more mileage in PA and less mileage in New Jersey. Because the PA costs less, right? So in this case, the road is not straight, there is angle. And we can just uh, 
um, a sketch the angle with another color. So this is a normal line of the border. And there's an angle in the PA. We can call this the incident angle. Okay? And the angle in the New Jersey is this one. That will be the theta in New Jersey. Okay. So we want to change the angle. We can vary, vary the angle. PA and to minimize the cost. Suppose uh, the cost in the PA for every mileage is C PA and the cost in New Jersey is C NJ. Okay, then the total cost, the total cost will be the mileage in the PA times the cost in the PA plus the mileage in the New Jersey times the cost in New Jersey. And we want to minimize this. So let's do some calculation. Um, we can set um, the distance from the Bethlehem to the border is a constant. This is Y in PA and the same thing uh, the distance from the border to Trenton is also constant. This is y. Oh, let's use x. x. x and pa. This is x direction. This is y direction. So this is x in New Jersey. So x pa and x New Jersey uh, is a constant. It doesn't change. What can be changed is the y direction. The y is from this point, this point to the intersect. This is uh, the y, and this guy is the distance from in the y direction from Bethlehem to Trenton. Suppose this is l, then this length is l minus y. So x is a constant but we can change y, we change the theta. So the, this question will be to get the minimal, uh, minimize the cost, total cost by adjusting the value of y. Right? So let's do the mileage. The mileage in the Pennsylvania total cost will be uh, the x in PA square plus y square root. That's uh, the length from the best hand to the border times the cost in PA, right? Plus and the mileage in New Jersey, that will be the x in New Jersey square plus L minus y Square times the cost in New Jersey. Okay, then we want to minimize the total cost. So that means we can do the derivative of total cost over the only thing we can change is y. Y, so we do the dy to the, the equivalent to zero. So if we get the zero derivative, then we get the uh, minimum cost. Okay, in this case, let's do the derivative. The derivative of y for the square root will be the one half, one over square root xpa square y square times 2y times the cost in pa. Okay, this is derivative for the first term. The second term will be also one half, one over square root x in New Jersey, square plus L minus y square. And the numerator will be two times L minus y. And there's a minus, so I have a minus here, and times the cost in New Jersey. And this is equivalent to zero. So we have 
um, the first term equals the second term. The second term and the first term are equivalent and the half and the two just cancel, the two cancel. So we have first term y xpa square plus y square times the cosine pa equivalent to the L minus Y X New Jersey L minus Y square times cos in New Jersey. So let's check what each term means. So first term, first term Y over square root X square plus Y square. What's this? Let's go back to the to the figure. We have the Y over the mileage in the Pennsylvania. That's this line, right? Y over this line. Y over this line actually is a sine theta of PA. So this is sine theta of PA. And the same thing, this guy, L minus Y is this length. And the denominator is mileage in the New Jersey. So this is also the sine theta in New Jersey. Sine theta in New Jersey. So in this case, we have the relation sine theta in PA over sine theta in New Jersey is equivalent to the ratio of the cost. We have the cost in New Jersey over the cost in PA. So if the cost is constant, then this, this ratio is a constant. So in a word, to summarize this calculation, we said that if we want to minimize the cost, then um, if we want to construct a road from point A to point B, then the, uh, the path of this road will be uh, applied for this relation. This, this relation is sine theta relation. Okay. So if we, um, we know how this is, uh, this is, this could happen, then we can go back to lab pass. If there is an interface of air and the water and the light want to travel from A to B. And we know the light in the air and the light in the water has different speed. The speed of light in the air is three times 10 to the eight meter per second. But the speed in the water is 2.25 times 10 to the eight meter per second. So the speed are different. So if we minimize uh, the traveling time, minimize the traveling time, This is not a straight line. If we want to draw a straight line to minimize the traveling time or the tra traveling path, this is not true because it travels fast in the air and travels slow at, at water. So if we want to get the minimum traveling light, we want the light travels in the air for long distance and the travel in the water for a little bit shorter distance. So in this case, we will solve the derivative and get a relation of theta in the air and the theta in the water applying for the Snell's law. In this case, we have sine air over sine theta in the water. It's equivalent to the speed ratio for the light in each meter. So we have the speed, the speed of the air and the speed in the water. So this is uh, why still a snail's law is true because the light want to minimize the traveling time. Actually, this is a statement I put forth by, uh, hold on, let me see. Is the name by the format. 
So I introduced the format principle. So many years ago, the physicist the format, uh, the format, the format, format principle set the the path, the path taken by a light ray between two given point. is the path that can be traveling or the tra traverse in the least of time. So for light, if it wants to travel from A to B, then the traveling time should be the minimum. If this is the minimum, it will give us the Snell's law. We have this one. And the ratio of the light speed at different media is called refractive index. So this is a very famous statement. And if we use this format um, to study the reflection, we have the surface and the light will start from A to B, right? But it will strike the interface. Then we need a light pass. We have many options, but which option can give us the minimum light pass? It should be uh, the reflection. Then we can do the reflection image at here, then we just uh, connect the A and the B. Then this point will be the light strike the surface. So then we go back here, then we can confirm this angle equivalent to this angle, equivalent to this angle. So in this case, we said the incident angle is, reflect, is equal to the uh, bounce back angle. So we call this Fermat's principle. The, the light always travel the minimum time. Okay, so um, I think this is a refractive light. And uh, if um, we want to also know why the light will change the direction, we can also interpret the refraction in this way. Suppose we have the interface. We have an interface and there is a car. Car has four tires. And this car just go in this way with the angle with the interface. And when this car strikes the interface, the interface uh, on both sides, one is a flat surface, flat road. And on the other side is grass, the grass lamp. If the grassland and the flat road had the interface and this car just across the, the interface and slow down. So the speed in the flat road is fast, is fast. And the speed in the grassland is slow. Okay, so when this car reach the interface, the left tie will slow down, speed drop, but the right tie keep the same uh, constant speed. So the speed is faster than the left, then the car will speed or slide, right? This car will slide because the two tires have different speed. Then the car traveling direction will spin in this way. So after the car enters the grassland, the direction will go in this way. So after this car cross the, the interface, then the direction change. So that's why when the speed 
as the two media are different, um, the direction of the traveling will change. This is the reason. Okay, do you have any other question? So if not, let's talk about the third phenomenon, total reflection. The total reflection happened when the light uh, starting at the high index media and cross the low, cross the interface and enter a low index media. For example, if we use a laser point, start from the water, shine the light to the interface and strike the air water interface. And some light bounce back, some light and um, penetrate into the air. And when the light enters the air, the angle in the air is always larger than the angle in the water. So we have the angle in the air larger than the water in the air. And they apply to Snell's law. The Snell's law said we have sine theta in the air equivalent to the sine theta in the water equivalent to the N. The reflective index of the air water interface is 0.3. 1.3. So that means if we increase the incident angle, the increased angle in the water, the angle is uh, air will be increased too. But if the angle in the water is close to 90 degree, what will happen? The sine angle in the air will be 1.3 times the sine theta in the water. This close to one, so that means this sine function is larger than one. That's impossible, right? In the math, there's no solution for the sine theta a if this is equivalent, if, if this is larger than one, there's no solution. So what happened here? Uh, you can think about that. If we rotate the incident rays in clockwise, the angle increase, then the angle in the air will also increase. So at some place, the outgoing ray will reach 90 degree. If it reaches to 90 degree, that means the outgoing ray will travel parallel to the interface. That's impossible. How can a light traveling um, parallel with uh, the interface? How can we do that? If all the light is traveling uh, on the interface, that means no light penetrate. If there's no light entering the, uh, the air, then we can see all the light is bounced back to the water. So that means if the incident angle, the theta in the water, is larger than a critic angle. All the light, all rays, all light rays will be bounced back. and no light enter in the air. So this is a very important conclusion that says, if there's an angle and larger than a critical angle, then all the light will be reflected by the interface. We call the phenomenon as total reflection. Then the question is, how do we address the critical angle. So think about that. The Snell's law said uh, the angle in the air cannot be larger than 90 degrees. So maximum of this one is 90 degrees. This is maximum. So that means if there's a 90 degree, sine 90 degree, the sine theta in the water will be the index. Okay? If this is index, that means 
the sine angle in the water will get the maximum of one over n because sine 90 degrees one. So that means if the angle in the water is equivalent to the arc sine one over n, that's the maximum angle that we can use in the water if we want some light leaking in the air. If the angle is larger than the sine arc sine one over n, then there's no light uh, in the air. All the light will be reflected by the interface. Okay, so what's the application of, of the total reflection? The thing about that, we have the optical fiber. The optical fiber is made by glass. It's very brittle, right? Glass. So if we have one computer and connect with the other computer, if there's no Wi Fi, we have to use optical fiber to connect one computer with the other. So, what does optical fiber mean? The optical fiber actually a glass a glass tube okay? a glass tube and the glass tube has an index of around 1.5 and outside is air air is uh, one index the index is one so we can uh, generate a signal signal generated by my computer and this signal could be some electric signal, then we use a light source to trigger the night light source. Then the light source will generate a light. Then this light will travel through the fiber and this fiber will guide the, this optical rays to the other computer. Then we want to make sure when the light traveling into the fiber and the bounce at multiple reflection, and there's no light leaking. There should be no light leaking from the air glass interface. So we want to make sure all the reflection in the fiber should reach the total reflective angle. Right? The total reflection angle is a critical angle. So if the, this angle is larger than the critical angle, then we can guarantee all the light traveling into this optical fiber and there's no light leaking. So how do we um, generate a light to make sure this, uh, this incident angle is larger than the critical angle? So let's go back to the fiber. The incident light, as an angle, this is the incident angle, we call it the theta A. Then this is air, the index equivalent to one. In the glass, the index is equivalent to 1.5. Then this light refractive into a array, then reach the top interface. Then we want to make sure this angle, here we use theta B, theta B to larger than the critical angle. Yes. The critical angle is arc sine one over n, n is 1.5. So if we have theta b larger than the critical angle, then this light will be reflected totally on the surface. And when it bounces back, and we assume this optical fiber are parallel, then at this position, the theta b prime is equivalent to the theta b. So all the light after that will be larger than the critical angle because they are parallel. Right? So we only need to uh, guarantee the first angle is larger than critical angle. So if this is uh, should be larger than critical angle, then that means this angle should be very small. I use theta uh, d. So if theta b was to larger than the critical angle, then we need the theta d is as small as possible. So 
as much as possible. But the theta d should be small. And if theta d is small, then the theta a should also be small. Because we have sine theta a over sine theta d equivalent to the index 1.5. So that means if the theta a should, should be very small, that means the theta a has a maximum angle to the within the zero to the maximum. So if the theta a is between this range, then we have a total reflection. If the theta a is larger than a maximum angle, then there's no total reflection. There will be some light leaking. Okay, so how to do we determine the maximum angle for the theta A? So we know the theta B has a minimum angle. Right? If the theta B has a minimum angle, the minimum angle for the theta B is arc sine one over 0.5. Then the theta D and the theta B has a sum equal to uh, 90 degree, right? So theta D equivalent to the pi over two minus theta b. That would be the pi over two minus arc sine one over point of five. One over point of five. Okay, that's a theta d. Then theta a and theta d have this relation. So we have theta a equivalent to the one point of five time sine theta d, then we have the arc sine. Okay, so in this case, we get this relation, arc sine 1.5 sine theta d. Sine theta d here is equivalent to the sine half pi minus theta b that will be cosine theta b. Cosine theta b will be arc sine 1 over 0.5. OK, so we get the maximum angle for the theta a is this one. So if the theta a larger than this value, then that means there's no total reflection. So the maximum theta A uh, for the optical fiber, we have a name. We call this numerical aperture. The max numerical aperture. So uh, this is the knowledge of optical fiber. And I think I have a video to show you how we use water and to make a optical fiber to guide the light to make a colorful fountain in Pennsylvania. I have a video to show you. Hold on. Um, Nope. Um, hold on. I think I have the video. Three optics. Let me use this one. Oh, here. I think there is a video. This video just to show 
Um, you see some some water has a light. Actually, they have a, a light bulb on the bottom, and when this light shine the water, this light pen, um, does travel into the water beam, and this water beam uh, will have a color. So this is how they use uh, uh, the water as a fiber or the, to guide the light. And uh, by using different color of lights, then they can color the, the water by different color. Okay. So I think uh, this is uh, uh, the optics I want to talk today. And uh, uh, I, I just talk about the reflection and how do we interpret it interpreted the uh, refraction and also the total reflection. And uh, if you don't have other questions, I will see you on Friday. Thank you.